Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. David here with another cryptocurrency update. I hope you guys all had an amazing holiday season. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, with New Year's coming in, I think it's important for us to start to look back at some of the history in these markets instead of just waiting for new news to come out and then make decisions. I, I believe it's really important for us to start to take looks back and understand a little bit more about the history and the involvement of central banks and the powers that be in the way that these markets move, live, thrive, and die in some instances. Today, the article that we're going to go through is an article by Steve St. Angelo called Paper versus Physical. All right. And it was written on May 16, 2017. I'm going to try to start picking articles that are a little bit more outdated. I don't want to say outdated, but to have a little bit of length and life to them so that you have an opportunity to read some of the comments that have been made about the articles or to seek out some additional information in regards to the information actually pertaining to what you're reading. Instead of reading an article that came out five minutes ago and then trying to hunt down sources and take guesses as to what's going to happen. The article today is going to be really important for us. And I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. I'm only going to read bits and pieces of it because it's a long article, but I think that I've highlighted a lot of the important bits for us as Bitcoin and XRP and cryptocurrency investors to take out of this message. While many precious metal investors realize the massive amount of paper trading leverage taking place in the gold market, they should see what is happening in the silver market. $9.8 trillion of notional gold paper trading took place on the exchanges around the world in 2016. That's versus $42 billion in actual physical gold investment. That was a paper to physical ratio of 233 to 1. For every 233 paper contracts that existed, one person owned that actual physical amount of gold. 233 to 1. These are important numbers to remember. In 2017, the World Silver Survey came out with a total physical silver investment for 2016 at a whopping $4.4 billion. That was nearly 10 times less, though, than all physical gold investment in 2016. The way we come up with that silver total is by physical bars, the actual bars that people buy, the official government coins and metals, and the ETP or the ETF inventory buildup. That is the actual physical accounts of gold or silver that the ETF providers have to house as means to pay out those pieces of gold or silver. Now, you've got 83.6 million ounces of physical bars, you have 123 million ounces of official coins and metals, and you have 47 million ounces of ETP, the inventory buildup for the ETFs. That's 253.8 million ounces. All right. Now, if you quantify that from 2016 prices, that's $17.14 spot price times uh, 253 million ounces of silver. That comes to 4.4 billion. So that's just a breakdown of how we come up to the number of 4.4 billion. All right. In the past six years, the okay sorry looking over the markets for the past six years the total of 32 billion dollars in investment from 2011 to 2016 for silver is nothing compared to the staggering amount of central bank asset purchases the banks the central banks had purchased one trillion dollars in assets in 2017 but we have a statement from Michael Hartnett of Bank of America, and he, he notes that central banks, ECB and BOJ, have bought $1 trillion in 2017 in the first four months. Okay, now if you annualize that, that's $3.6 trillion. Okay, that's the largest central bank buying on record in history. Uh, another situation that we get into is by the central banks propping up the stock, the bond, the real estate markets, the true value of silver or gold is being severely depressed. And like I said, if you can take the word Bitcoin or Ethereum or Litecoin or XRP and put it there and you have the same ability to reason in the future prospects of this, then you'll understand what we're saying. Because the stocks, the bonds, the real estate markets are being propped up. The value of your core assets are being suppressed. Like your gold, your silver, and your houses, or your bitcoins. 
Um, and of course, to keep investors from finding out about silver's high quality store of value, the price continues to be capped by the massive amount of paper trading. Now, what we're talking about, the paper trading leverage, is the amount of paper that exists to physical. This is going to be something we get into as we start to get ETF approval, is that these companies that are going to be get, getting these ETFs approved and then selling these ETFs to us, they're going to have huge prospectuses like this that are going to be multiple pages long. And... They're going to give it to each one of their investors and they're going to say, go ahead and read this. But on like the 12th or 13th page of the prospectus, it's going to be buried in small print that says, if you decide to sell, you don't necessarily get the physical gold, silver or Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever the ETF is that gets approved. You're not going to actually be able to take physical delivery on that Bitcoin nor do you actually own that physical Bitcoin. You have a paper contract to the rights to purchase that Bitcoin at that specific price. That's gonna be it. You don't have the right to actually take physical delivery. So that's why we say that the gold is 233 paper contracts to one physical gold coin. So if I had one physical gold coin, there's 233 people lined up in front of me that all have a piece of paper that say that they own that same gold coin. That's not good. Not for the people with the paper, at least. Right, okay, next thing we're going to discuss. Uh, the price continues to be capped, like I said, by massive paper trading leverage. Um, 2017, the World Silver Survey, total paper trading silver volume on the world's exchanges was 159 billion ounces in 2016. Um, thus, the exchanges traded 180 times more paper silver in 2016 than the global mine supply. So we're going to translate that again into Bitcoin. That means that if the ETFs came online and they sold 180 times more Bitcoin contracts than the miners even mined that year. The Bitcoin miners only mined X number of Bitcoin that year, and the ETFs sold 180 times that amount in paper contracts. All right. Now, you do Bitcoin times 180 would mean that they sold 3.7 billion paper Bitcoin contracts. If that was correlated to the Bitcoin ETF that possibly gets approved in the future. Now, if you multiply the 159 billion ounces of paper silver traded in 2016 by the average spot price of 1714, you'll come up to 2.7 trillion dollars of notional paper silver versus the 4.4 billion of actual silver investment. Okay? Thus the paper here hear this. Thus the paper notional silver trading ratio to physical silver investment was 570, 517 to 1. For, ever, for every one physical ounce of silver somebody has, there's 517 people lined up that all have a piece of paper that say they own that same physical ounce of silver. The problem is most of them didn't read their contracts and they don't realize that they don't actually own that physical silver. And you will not physically own that Bitcoin. You will only own the rights to the money associated to that Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin's trading at 10,000 at the time that you decide to sell your Bitcoin contract, you'll get 10,000 in US dollar or you'll get an equivalented $10,000 in Euro. That is how it works. If you times the 517x into the Bitcoin market, that's 10.8 billion Bitcoin that they would be selling the rights to, not the, the physical. Because that many Bitcoin don't exist. But it doesn't mean that they can't create a big enough money supply behind their contracts to just sell as many as they would like. That's going to be a huge problem. The interesting part about me finding this article by Steve Santangelo written in 2017 in May and not expecting anything to do with cryptocurrency, I'm really looking for articles that have nothing to do with crypto, especially that, that pertain to the things that I've learned and that I know. There's actually a section in this article about cryptocurrency and we're going to jump right into that now. 
This is what Steve Santangelo wrote about cryptocurrency back in May of 2017. Currently, the cryptocurrencies are experiencing a huge gains over the past several months. Obviously, speaking about you know December to January, and then there was bull runs, little mini bull runs and busts within that time frame leading up to really where we are today. Currently, cryptocurrencies are experiencing huge gains over the past several months. It doesn't matter if an individual agrees with owning Bitcoin or one of the many cryptocurrencies. The important thing to understand is that the tremendous price increases in the many cryptocurrencies are likely due to the concern that the massive amount of central bank $1 trillion in asset purchases in the first four months of the year, 2017, that's a problem. Furthermore, cryptocurrencies are likely a good indicator of what will take place in the gold or silver market when investors realize most stocks, bonds, and real estate values will continue to implode as the U.S. and global oil industries disintegrate. That is very interesting. Not only that there was something about cryptocurrencies in here, but that this article was written... In May of 2017, the stock market has basically torn on a straight up trajectory since then. And if you understand really what's going on here, that the gold and silver prices are being capped because of the paper contracts and the fact that the contracts can be added as more funds move in, they could just add more contracts and add more contracts, but you can't create more XRP. That's like it says here. However, cryptocurrencies do not have this problem because the amount of Bitcoins, as an example, are limited. There will forever and always only be 21 million Bitcoin. Satoshi's off the books. Many people have lost their keys and don't have access to their Bitcoin, so we're way less than 21 million. It's a deflationary currency that you're dealing with within the aspects of Bitcoin and XRP and some of these cryptocurrencies. 517 to 1. Yes, there is an inherent positive side to ETFs, giving people more access to understanding what this asset class can bring in the future, but only if we do it correctly. And like I've said before, unless we start to look into the history, we're never going to know the possibilities of the future. The history is not necessarily indicative of the future, but it definitely rhymes sometimes. They definitely travel in blocks of sometimes they're doing the same thing and traveling in the same directions, making the same kind of moves, breaking on the same kind of lackings and exploding upward on the same kind of manipulation. As we move forward in this industry, you really have to start to do your research. Because if you're going to buy into the electronic traded funds, if you already own a gold or a silver ETF and you think that the day that the shit hits the fan, you're going to be able to cash out your gold or silver ETF into physical gold or silver. And if that's the reason that you bought those ETFs is to have a have a backing or a hedge against the US dollar and the reason you're buying gold and silver is because you know that it's an it's a asset that you can back as a protection against the losses of the dollars and traditional investment markets. The same thing can't necessarily be said for cryptocurrencies at this point. We haven't experienced mass adoption. Bitcoin has limited use cases and Ethereum itself has limited use cases and XRP personally has limited use cases. Even if each one of those coins has a specific reason in which they were created and the utility for why they work and function exists solely within themselves, XRP as a bridge asset, a way to transfer value and um, give liquidity to markets that don't necessarily communicate expeditedly. Now, boom, you want to send money to Europe, send it. You want to get um, money from Africa, send it here, send it there, do it. That's what XRP is. You want to have a validation and verification of Bitcoin transactions, um, you can use the Bitcoin ledger. If you want to be a developer, you can use Ethereum. If you want to wait for the ETFs to come out so that they can sell you their, their packaged up, tied up bow on the present 
uh, idea of what cryptocurrency is or if you did buy into their idea of what precious metals investing is and you own paper contracts, if you own $100,000 worth of gold ETF paper contracts, you're one of those people that's in a really interesting position because yeah, you can sell it now for cash and take that cash and buy actual physical gold or silver. But in the end, if you try to cash that out, it's gonna come out as cash and if you do it too late, you won't have the time or the, the, the resources to get your hands on the physical silver or gold. Or in these cases, you won't have the time to get your hands on the XRP or the Bitcoin before the prices move too high and make the time that you're using to make that switch such a loss that it will just seem completely unnecessary and you'll be like all of the traditional investors who over the course of the last two weeks, you know, we saw the we saw from yesterday's video that it took multiple years for the for the S&P and the Dow Jones to go down 49% or 50%. It went down 20% in a multiple of a couple of weeks. If you don't find that to be strange that these price drops and rises are happening so fast. It's gonna run by some people who think that they're gonna still have those old time frames to work on. You don't have the old time frames. You only have today and you only have the information that you can read and the research that you can do. And you only have the amount of people that you can affect if you're actually going out there and speaking your mind and being true about your passion and trying to not influence but affect others. If when you're done watching this video at any point in your day you think of something that we discussed here or you're buying a coffee at Starbucks or you're going to the movie and you think, well, how many XRP could I have bought with this or uh, quantify how many coffees that you bought over the last 10 years and think you'd have a whole Bitcoin by now if, if you were just making your own coffee or rolling your own cigarettes instead of buying Marlboro, Marlboro packs Smoking's not good, but I'm just trying to use examples that people are gonna understand. We spend money so much faster than we make it. I make money and it's gone. Anytime a little bit of money comes in for me, it's gone. The opportunity for me to buy a little bit, a little bit of XRP comes so few and far between based on the fact that I am stuck in the fiat paradigm. They have me very much locked into it. So my objectives as an investor in future technologies is to get in what I can, when I can, where I can. Tell me your coins, tell me your exchanges, tell me the troubles that you've had, tell me the blessings that you've experienced in these markets. Start all these conversations down below. And if you guys made it to this point in the video, 17 minutes and 39 seconds of your life, you'll never get back. I really appreciate it. But I was there with you, and so were a thousand other people. And in a 100 years from now, they're gonna look back at this time and they're gonna say, you know what? Great, great grandpa David and great, great grandma Teresa and great, great grandpa Marco and home value glass, great, great grandpa and grandmas, everybody, all of us, we're gonna be the ones that took the chance. We're gonna be the ones that gave ourselves the opportunity to not just be inundated and trapped under this, this net of conspiracy and craziness. We are the movers and we are the makers of these markets. We make our own markets and we move our own money. Nobody else does that. Unless you've given yourself up to the stock markets and to the currency markets, the government is gonna do that for you at some point. Get into your gold and your silvers, get into your Bitcoins and your crypt cryptos. Hold the things close to you that you love. Call your mother, call your father, call your best friend. Tell everybody around you that you are doing this for not only yourself, but for them. And if they don't have the ability to see this or the opportunity to do their own research, that you are gonna spend every moment that you have free to, to express your mind and to research this industry and to spread this message and to share this video. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. I hope you have an extremely blessed day. Thank you so much.